Hey, say something, anything. I know you hear me. My mother-in-law and husband, who seem completely oblivious to my voice, even though we are in the same living room. Mom, can you hear anything? What? I can't hear anything. <laughs> the two of them laughed hysterically. I held back tears as I packed my belongings and ran away from my in-law's house. My name is Iris, and I am 34 years old. Lately, I've been recognized for my achievement at work, and even praised by my boss. I'm in a really good mood. But just two years ago, I was living in hell. Back then, I was living with my husband, Vincent. I met him at a matchmaking party. We were the same age and could talk and get along just fine. I made a promise to meet again because our conversation flowed more naturally with any other man at the party. It seemed like he hadn't talked to any other woman at the party as much as he did with me. I was nervous about going to those parties at first, but now I'm glad I went. I got to meet someone like you, Iris. When he said that, I couldn't help but blush like a young girl. From then on, we dated for about six months, and then he proposed to me. I accepted his proposal. Both Vincent and I were being pressured by our parents about getting married, so we were both positive about it. And then, about three months after our wedding... Sorry, Iris. I got really drunk after a party the other day. It seems like my wallet got stolen, and my cards was used. My bank account is empty now. I can't afford our living expenses, so I was thinking of relying on my parents' help. Vincent said that to me while kneeling down and begging. I was truly surprised by his confession. Indeed, a few days earlier, when I couldn't reach him after the drinking party, I went to look for him. I found him sitting and sleeping in a corner of a nearby alley. He must have had his wallet stolen before I found him. Stanley? Living with your parents? How about I contribute more to our living expenses for a while? When I suggested that, Vincent shook his head. Do you even know how much the mortgage is? There's no way you can afford it. His words struck a chord with me. Perhaps Vincent doesn't know how much I earn, I thought. But before I could correct him about my income, an unbelievable statement came out of his mouth. Besides, I've already talked to my mom about moving in, so you don't have to worry about anything. Huh? You've already talked to her? I felt like I was losing consciousness. I'm not particularly close with my mother-in-law. And it all started with her attitude when Vincent first brought me home. When she asked about my alma mater and where my parents work, my mother-in-law let out a big sigh. What? He's chosen such an ordinary woman. My mother-in-law said it loudly as if she wanted me to hear. At that time, my husband was in the kitchen, so he probably didn't hear her voice. I was shocked to hear those words and froze in place. Furthermore, my mother-in-law acted as if she knew everything about me. I'll allow the marriage. But don't drag Vincent down. She said that with a harsh gaze. It seemed like my mother-in-law didn't want to accept me as her son's wife. Living with a mother-in-law like that, my spirit felt heavy. I don't think her personality would change even if we became a family. A few years before I met Vincent, I heard that my father-in-law couldn't bear living with my mother-in-law and they got divorced. When I asked my husband about what happened, he just said, it was probably some stupid fight. He didn't seem to take their divorce too seriously. And shortly after we moved, my anxious feelings were proven right. When Vincent and I arrived at my in-law's house with the movies, my mother-in-law said, Vincent, welcome honey. Now, go rest in the living room. I'll get some snacks and tea for you. She welcomed my husband into the living room as if he were a little child. Hey, 
Can you do something about this baggage? My mother-in-law said to me coldly from the entrance. I don't understand why she treats me so badly. But I reluctantly instructed the movers on what to do with the bags and unpacked everything myself. Huh? You still haven't finished unpacking my bags? Normally, the wife unpacks the husband's bags first, right? As I unpacked without taking a break, my husband said such a ridiculous thing. I became worried. If I continue like this from the very first day, but I decided to gather myself and not give up. Maybe it's because I accepted their words without saying anything that they feel free to make fun of me. I decided the next time they say something, I'll respond properly. But that decision might have been a mistake. It happened when I went to work and came back home. Since my husband's workplace is closer to my in-law's house, Vincent comes home earlier than I do. When? who arrived home later than Vincent, was approached by my mother-in-law. Hey, Iris, what do you think you're doing? Normally, you should have come home before your husband and prepared dinner. My mother-in-law stood at the entrance, scolding me. Am I not even allowed to take off my shoes and enter the house? I thought to myself that I had to say something to my mother-in-law this time. I work as a full-time employee just like Vincent. Besides, my workplace is farther from his, so it's only natural that Vincent comes home earlier than me, even if it's the regular working hours. I try to calmly explain this to my mother-in-law, not letting my emotions get the best of me. Upon hearing my words, she turned red and went to the living room. I sighed and took off my shoes before entering the house. And that's when it all started. Vincent and my mother-in-law began ignoring me. Initially to the extent that it seemed like they couldn't hear my voice. But when I spoke a bit louder, both of them reacted, and we could have important conversations. However, as this continued for more than a few months, even I, with my patience, realized that something was off. Could it be that they were purposely avoiding me? I asked Vincent about it when we were alone, and he gave me an exasperated look and responded. That can't be true, right? You're just being paranoid. However, after that, the blatant disregard from my husband and mother-in-law became even more apparent. Vincent, I want to talk about our finances this month. Even when I try to initiate a conversation, my husband would ignore me, thinking that maybe he didn't hear me. I raised my voice, but he just stood up and went to his room. My mother-in-law did the same, not even attempting to look in my direction. When I called out multiple times, she raised the volume of the TV, drowning out my voice. The TV was so loud that I covered my ears and left the room. I couldn't understand the reason behind all of this. And these days, I felt increasingly down. Nonetheless, I continue to do household chores like laundry, cleaning, and cooking. I believe that if I remained silent, they would eventually start talking to me properly. But one year had passed since Vincent and I moved into my in laws house. At that time, I met someone through work who made me question things about Vincent. I wanted to ask my husband about it, but as usual, he didn't respond to me. Hey! Can you say something? Anything. You can hear my voice, right? We're all in the same living room. There's no way they can't hear me. Hey, mom. Can you hear anything? What? <laughs> I can't hear anything. <laughs> they both laughed and didn't even look at me. That's when I realized. Huh. They just want to hurt me. They're no longer my family. With that thought, I packed my belongings and left my in law's house. Shortly after, I filed for divorce. A few months later, I found out that Vincent had completed the necessary procedures, and I returned to being single. I decided to change jobs as well, because I didn't want Vincent to know about my new workplace. 
After settling into my new life, I moved out of my parents' house and started living on my own. And it was during this time, at my new job, that I had a fateful encounter. I met a man named Mike for the first time at a coffee shop near the office. It all started when I picked up the loose change that fell out of his wallet. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Saying that, he treated me the coffee I was buying. At that time, since we hadn't exchanged names or anything, I thought we wouldn't meet again. However, we happened to run into each other at work on another day. Mike and I had several such coincidental encounters. And about six months after we first met, we officially started dating. Since I had some time after meeting Mike, I felt comfortable starting a relationship with them. He also trusted me. After a few years of dating, we decided to live together with the intention of getting married. And after a while, we officially registered our marriage. By the time, I had completely forgotten about my ex-husband. However, suddenly, I received a message from Vincent. Since we hadn't been in contact, I had forgotten to block him. The abrupt email contained the following message. Mom passed away, come to the funeral. Why would I, the ex-wife, who divorced many years ago, have to attend my ex-mother-in-law's funeral? I told my current husband Mike about this. Would you at least go to the wake? After all, she was someone you were involved with in your life, and I'll go, as your husband. That's what Mike said. But honestly, I didn't want anything to do with them ever again. However, I didn't want to be seen as someone who ignores other people, similar to how they ignored me by not attending my ex-mother-in-law's funeral. Besides, I had Mike by my side. Looking back, I can't say that I completely severed ties with Vincent in my past relationship. I merely ran away. Now, I can put a proper end to that relationship this time. Thinking that, I went to the funeral of my ex-mother-in-law with Mike. When Vincent saw me, he approached me with a spark on his face, which was inappropriate for funeral. It had been years since I last saw my ex-husband, and it seemed like his face had gotten a bit rounder, perhaps due to unhealthy habits. Hey, Iris. So you didn't raise my contact information after all. You still have feelings for me, huh? If you kneel down and apologize right now, you can come back to me, you know? Seeing that expression, I felt uncomfortable. And in an instant, his face stiffened. Max's husband was looking at Mike. Is there anything you want from my wife? Saying that, Mike pulled my shoulder closer, his gaze cold and piercing. Upon seeing this, Vincent turned pale, trembling uncontrollably. Mr. President. Huh? I tied on my head in confusion. My ex-husband's face turned pale, as if drained of color. Th this is th that I. Uh. Indeed, Mike is the president of the company I work for. However, I didn't know that Vincent had any involvement with Mike. Mike, what's going on? As I asked my husband, he started to explain. Actually, I didn't tell you anything, but I decided to investigate your ex-husband because I thought something might happen to you. And it turns out, this person was fired from his previous company. Moreover, it was for embezzlement. I widened my eyes in surprise. The truth was, Vincent wanted to move back to his parents' house because he was being demanded money after his embezzlement was exposed. Unaware of that, we started living with his mother. And some time later, I heard from an acquaintance that Vincent had been fired from the company. I tried to confront him about it, but he and my mother-in-law continued to ignore me. So I thought it was hopeless and ran away from home. So, I was picked up by the company I'm currently working for. Mr. Smith here, the president is a major business partner of our company. My ex-husband, sweating profusely, 
Then Mike, who was next to me, continued. Until now, I've turned a blind eye to what you did to my wife. Well, you and Iris are divorced now, so I try not to bring personal matters into my work. Y yes, thank you. So, so um, does that mean our business dealings will continue as it is? He, who had acted sparia towards me, was now trembling like a small animal. Then I looked around. It seemed that Vincent's boss was also in attendance, and he approached us in a flustered manner. M Mr. Smith, to meet you here. Anything wrong? Wiping his head with a handkerchief, Vincent's boss asked Mike. Mike let out a sigh and replied, "Ah, oh, actually, my wife divorced this man several years ago, and at that time, he and his mother treated her so badly." When he called her to the funeral, saying she should come, I got worried about my wife and came with her. I is that true? Then he grabbed Vincent's shoulder. Vincent was avoiding eye contact as he was being questioned. And today, when he noticed my wife, he immediately told her to kneel if she wanted to remarry him. I'm glad I came with my wife. You. How dare you! Vincent's boss seemed like he was about to attack him. I have no intention to further humiliate my wife, so we'll leave now. I don't intend to speak ill of the deceased, but she treated my wife horribly, so there's no need for greetings, right? We are truly sorry. I will never let this guy bother you anymore. My ex-husband was in the daze on the spot. In that state. He wouldn't be able to handle the role of the chief mourner. Well, it has nothing to do with me and Mike anymore. A few days later, actually, I received a call from that trading company. It seems your ex-husband was fired. Mike spoke up. Huh? Fired? Yeah. They said he was fired without me even saying anything. They apologized for making you uncomfortable as well. It seems he was embezzling expenses at his current company too. People never change, huh? I couldn't help but sigh. Being married to someone like that—it's the worst. I said, and Mike laughed. Well, well, it's because of that divorce that I was able to meet you. My husband said with a smile, and I couldn't help but laugh along. In the next spring. A new family member will arrive. I want to build an even happier family with my kind husband and look forward to the birth of our child.